Hi, thanks for coming to my talk. My name is George Crane. I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Cambridge and NIAB. I started my project in uh, January 2018 and after a genetic extension from the HDB and AFCP, I'm due to finish in August 2021. So my project looks at uh, the impact of cover cropping and other farm practices on populations of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi and how the interplay of these impact crop growth and yield. So we'll start off with the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. These are ancient obligate root symbionts of land plants uh, linked to the colonization of the land uh, in the early Devonian by plants such as this, Algophyton major, which depended on interactions with these filamentous fungi for acquisition of nutrients from the, the nutrient poor soils of the time in exchange for photosynthetically derived carbon. And on the right here, you can see the remarkable similarities between a 450 million year old fossil and a, a two year old um, stained slide of a veg plant. 450 million years later, and the arbuscular mycorrhizae are still interacting with 80% of land plants, and they're essential for ecosystem fun functioning. So uh, grasslands, forests, and indeed, indeed agriculture. And meta-analyses have shown that colonization by the AM fungi have resulted in 35% increase in plant biomass and a 23% increase in crop yield. And it's also um, well documented that intensive agriculture, such as long fallow periods, high nutrient applications and cultivations can be detrimental to populations of AM fungi. Now, this is not necessarily the case. And Eric Verbruggen and Toby Kears, 2010, uh, suggested that actually some farming practices can be detrimental to some AM fungi. And they suggest that agriculture selects for generalists, which are tolerant to disturbance, and species that are adapted to environments requiring fast, copious reproduction and dispersal. Now, these species may be uh, well suited to their environment, but they may not be well suited to providing uh, plants with nutri nutrients and benefits. So one way of uh, uh, influencing mycorrhizal populations in the soil is with cover crops, uh, which are plants grown outside of regular crop production for the purpose of uh, protecting or improving soils. And many of your cover crops do interact with the AM fungi, with notable exceptions of the brassicas, including uh, all radishes and, and buckwheat and, and a few others. So I really have two main hypotheses. Firstly, that the use of cover crops promotes the establishment and maintenance of a diverse range of AM fungal species, which facilitates the increased interaction with uh, the following cash crop, whatever it may be, and to increasing diversity and abundance of some or all mycorrhizal fungi improve soil health, crop growth, and importantly, yield of following cash crops. So I have four ongoing projects. Firstly, is a UK-wide analysis of um, mycorrhizal fungi in agriculture. I have two replicated trials with NAB and uh, on, the, on the farm scale, uh, working with an innovative farmer's field lab. So we'll start off with the FERRA project. I've taken 150 of the original 258 soil samples that FERRA had uh, submitted as part of their big soil community. And I've sequenced this with um, 18S specific uh, primers for the AM fungi. And through this, I've identified 97 AM virtual taxa, which are, are roughly equivalent to the species level. And this covers many of the, the families and genera that we'd expect to see. On the right hand side, you can see some phylogenetic analyses that I undertook where I uh, identified three previously undescribed taxa, one glomus, one paraglomus and one ambispora. Um, so running through some uh, confirmatory checks on those just to make sure that they are indeed novel taxa. Perhaps more interestingly, what we can do uh, now is start to look at these species uh, distributions in relation to the, the mess data that Ferra collected. So here you're looking at the impact of soil organic matter on the AM diversity. So on the left, you can see uh, just the mean number of taxa at each site uh, classified by different levels of soil organic matter. And on the right, uh, a similar figure, but we're looking at the distribution of individual AM taxa 
So if we just zoom in here on one branch or two branches, um, you can see that the, the top branch is um, is full of, uh, of of generalist taxa. So we have uh, spots from red, orange, yellow to blue, indicating soil organic masses of uh, one to two point five percent to way over ten percent. But if you look at the bottom of this zoomed in panel, um, you'll see that this group of taxa are only observed in the five to seven point five percent region. So these might might be specialists of uh, organic matters of five to seven point five percent. We also have data on application of fungicides, both generally and specific fungicides. So on the left here, you're looking at uh, differential abundance analysis of um, of mycorrhizal taxa in fungicide versus non-fungicide treatments. So you can see that two glomus, one archispora and one diversospora are all significantly more abundant when fungicide is used. And these glomus and chloridoglomus in grey and green are significantly less abundant. And what we can do there is start to take individual uh, taxa as indicators of certain soil conditions. So just taking this, uh, this first uh, grey spot, the glomus, uh, virtual taxa number 342, we can look within our own data set and say that this species is found at 12 out of 148 of the sites. And we can look at the, the UK wide distribution of that species, but we can also look in other data sets online. So um, this particular record here is from Saka Sambiago Island in Italy, and it's classified as an anthro anthropogenic ash dump island ecosystem. So this species is probably quite tolerant to disturbance. In terms of the replicated trials, they're both uh, both run by the team at Morley. Uh, one is hosted at Morley and one is at Barbara. And I'll just run over a few um, a few things that I'll be looking at. So uh, a number of cover crop analyses, such as green area index throughout the, the winter growing period, soil penetration resistance and AM colonization. So on the right here, you're looking at um, a fluorescently stained uh, oat and vetch root. And this sort of gives us the first indication that as they look morphologically different, that they may be hosting different AM taxa. And this is going to be confirmed later with molecular methods. I can then look at the barley or the following crop root length colonization. That is how much of the root is colonized by our vascular mycorrhizal fungi. And um, if we ignore the effect of the nitrogen dose, we can see that compared to the fallow, the radish and oat has a, has a higher uh, root length colonization and uh, the barley following the five species legume mix in this case has the, again a higher colonization of around 50%, although this is, this is variable. We can also look at um, yields of these, these crops, in this case again spring barley, uh, following each cover crop treatment and at each nitrogen dose. At the 0% nitrogen dose for this laureate spring barley, we can see that the legume mix is providing the highest yield. Uh, however, unfortunately, this effect is diminished in the 50% and 100% dose. Um, so we're just trying to work out why that is now. Um, and it's likely to be due to this year was particularly hot and dry year, and that perhaps the cover crops had taken up a lot of that deep uh, moisture from the soil. So then I hope to um, confirm some of my findings on the farm scale. So working with the Innovative Farmers Field Lab and um, here are four of the seven sites. So the farmers were interested in using farm produced anaerobic digestate as a soil amendment using cover crops to stabilise the nitrogen and reduce uh, nitrification and leaching. And the cover crop mix we're using here is a radish, oat and vetch and a buckwheat that was killed over, killed off during winter frosts, uh, which is the same cover crop as, as I use in a, as in one of the replicated trials. And this time we're looking at maize as the cash crop. And if you'd like to see that and some of the other results, um, please check my page on the HDB website. I've recently given a 30 minute talk, which goes through uh, a lot of my results in, in more detail. But with that, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks to Lydia Smith and the Innova Innovation Farm Team, my other supervisor, Lydia Smith, and the Serial Symbiosis Lab, um, Nathan, Liz, David, Stephen, Charles Team at Morley, Matthias, John, Ian, Ferrer, 
Alex from Computer Science at Cambridge and all the innovative farmers. Thanks for listening.